Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to learn how to tag and query resources in AWS resource groups using AWS SDK for .NET. My name is Srivant Tanayaka, and I'm a senior partner solution architect at Amazon Web Services, focusing around Microsoft technologies. We will learn why we need AWS resource groups and how to create a resource group and query for resources. We will then do everything we did manually using AWS SDK for .NET. You have a lot of resources in AWS. So that could be AWS EC2 instances, our databases, S3 buckets, Amazon FSx Windows file servers, to name a few. You can attach an arbitrary key value pair. So in this case, I have some set of keys defining the EC2 instances where you have a key like stage, a version, app, and I have given the values for those. What we need is some kind of a mechanism to group these resources based on these tags. If you don't have this grouping mechanism, you need to go into different AWS console sections to get those resources. Here you can send a query that says, hey, give me all the resources where the stage equals prod, version equals one, and app equals finance. You can also query for something like version equals one, which will cover even Amazon FSx and another EC2 instance in the development environment. Similarly, you can ask for multiple objects. So in this case, I'm querying for app equal finance and stage is either development or production. This way, you can arbitrarily categorize any AWS resources and then quickly access them. Let's now go for a demo and then see how we can do this. I have tagged my finance one EC2 instance with few tags. In this case, stage equals prod version one and app equals finance. Similarly, for finance two, I have tagged the application with the key value pairs I wanted. I also tagged few volumes. So these volumes, uh, in this case, if you look at uh, stage equals prod, you will find some volumes with some tags I have attached. I also attach some tags for deep database instances. Let's go into the resource groups and then create a resource group. You can create a tag-based resource group where you provide the resource group based on the tags associated with the resources. Alternatively, you can provide a resource group based on uh, resources a CloudFormation has provided. In that case, you need to select CloudFormation stack-based resource group. Let's go for tag-based one. You need to select what resources belongs into this resource group. In this case, I'm going to select EC2 volumes. And the tags of those volumes has to have a tag called app equals finance and another tag called stage equals production. Let's preview the group. So you got four EC2 volumes. Let's also add another resource type. In this case, I'm going to select EC2 instances. Query the result, you will find now volumes plus EC2 instances appearing in my console. You can save this one, give it a name, so that later you can query for these resources using this saved query. If you go into My Finance, you will find that the two EC2 instances and the volume appearing. That's how you create resource groups using manually in AWS console. You can now quickly navigate to these resources in the AWS console. I'm in my Visual Studio. I have added a very simple Nougat package called AWS SDK Resource Group. That will allow me to interact with AWS Resource Group API in my .NET code. In my main function, I initialize I Amazon Resource Group client by providing it the credentials. If you are running this one in EC2 instances or in kind of a Lambda function, 
you can always use the attach role to that services to get temporary credentials. Let's now learn how we can programmatically create a resource group. I have this simple create resource group one function that I'm calling from my main method, passing my iAmerson resource group client as the client for this uh, method. Let's put a breakpoint and then start the program. I first create a create group request, give it a name, a description, and then create resource query. And the resource query type is tag filter one zero. The reason for this one is this is going to be a query based out of tags. And in the resource query, I specify the resource type filters to include the type of resources I want to have. In this case, it's going to be EC2 instances and EC2 volumes. And for the tag filters, I give the key as stage, value as prod.dev, so that includes both production and development related staging resources. For the app, I specify the values has to be finance. Let's create the resource group request. Check the status code. So the resource group is successfully created. In my AWS console, you can already find that I have one called my finance app one with the condition that I have specified where the resource type is easy to instances and volumes. And for the tags, you need to have stage equal prod or due and the app has to be finance. That gives me the resources belongs into that query. You can also create a resource group based out of the CloudFormation stack. So here I'm passing the CloudFormation stack related uh, query. In this case, the query type is CloudFormation stack one zero. That will make sure that it select resources provisioned by a given CloudFormation. For the cloud formation, if you look at the cloud formation, I have already specified a cloud formation that I already deployed here. You copy that stack ID, which is the ARN of the cloud formation, and you need to provide this stack ID in your query so that your resource group will select all the resources provisioned by this stack. I select the resource type filter as all supported. So that will select all the type of resources this cloud formation has provisioned. This is also a valid resource type filter for tag based queries. But for the stack identifier, I specify the ARN of the cloud formation stack that I have selected. Let's create the resource group. If you now go into my Aura app, you will find the, all the resources that CloudFormation has provisioned. That includes RDS instances, EC2 instances, NAT gateways, security groups, internet gateways, route tables, to name a few. You can also delete a resource group. I have a very simple delete resource group request. You specify the group ARN. The group ARN is something that you cannot find in AWS console, but you can easily derive it by this naming convention. So that usually starts with ARN colon, AWS colon, resource dash group colon, the region at which this group is defined, followed by your account number colon, group, name of the resource group that you have created. In this case, I'm deleting my Aura app group. So it will delete this My Aura app group. The name of this group, you need to take it from the console or from AWS CLI. Let's now run this query and then see what happened to the My Aura group that I had in my console. If you go into your resource groups, you will find that resource group no longer exists. Let's now see how you can read resource groups. So I have a very simple method to read resource groups. And here what I'm doing is creating a list uh, group request so that we can use to list all the resource groups that I have defined. I have defined the max number of results I'm going to read. 
and then I'm going to uh, read these results. So as I can, can see, I have the next token uh, set to uh, the next. And I start with null and then I query uh, for five resource groups at a time. You can usually keep it around 10 when you are doing in a production environment. Uh, don't keep it at a very high level like 100 because you will get some throttling errors if you try to get like that. So I'm going to read through these uh, resource groups. So I'm going to list resource groups, so five at a time. Um, and then I'm going to get uh, some resource groups. So you can see that I got uh, right now um, three resource groups. And let's uh, go through this uh, again. So I'm going to get the uh, group ARN. So you can see that uh, the ARN of my resource group. And I'm going to use it to get group information. So that will give you more detailed view of that uh, resource group. And then I'm going to use the same group ARN to get the uh, group query that I have defined for that. So that I have printed all the values, uh, including the type of the resource query, which is in this case a tag query and the resource filter that I have defined. And you can see that all the uh, type of resource groups I have in my uh, AWS environment. You can also search for different resource types in the same way we have research uh, in the AWS console. Uh, so if I go into this one, you can say how many resources you want to have. Uh, you can define the resource filter as what kind of resources that you're looking for. In this case, I'm looking for EC2 instances and EC2 volumes and the tag filter as the key equals stage. Uh, and the value is prod.do and the application has to be finance. So I go through that and then I can get a list of resources. And then in this case, I'm printing that one into the screen. So here you can see the type of resources I got. I got like two EC2 instances and uh, four uh, EBS volumes. And it printed all the uh, resources that I have in my environment. You can also specify resource type filter as all supported. That will ensure that all AWS resource group supported services are included in this query. Remember, not all AWS services are supported tagging. Time to time, we will improve the services and allow tagging. In that case, all supported will include those services as well. Here you get a list of resources, in this case, two EC2 instances and one file system. The reason for this one is that in the tag filter, I have specified that the version, uh, the key version has to be value two, and those are the resources that match this query. In this case, it's two EC2 instances and one file system. 